in the spirits world, Mexico is typically known for its tequila and to a lesser extent, mezcal. But they aren't the only two spirits Mexico produces. And while a good portion of Mexican spirits are derived from agave, some of them aren't. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Sotal, the northern Mexican spirit that actually doesn't come from agave at all. In this video, I want to cover three main things about Sotal. The first being, what is it and where does it come from? The second being, how does it compare and contrast to tequila and mezcal? And third, I'm gonna be doing a little taste test of the two bottles of Sotal that I have here. So what exactly is Sotal? Well, Sotal is a spirit from the northern area of Mexico, as well as uh, some parts of Texas. Uh, the desert that kind of extends from Mexico into Texas is a really, really good breeding ground for the plants that are used in making Sotal. And like I said earlier, even though it's a Mexican spirit, it does not derive from agave. It actually is made from a plant called the Sotal, or in English it translates to desert spoon. Sotal's scientific name, if you will, is Dazzlerian. Uh, it's kind of a mouthful to say, so we're gonna stick with Sotal. It is a very, very thin, it, it essentially looks like an agave, and until they did DNA testing on this plant, they just thought it was agave. And then finally, some scientists went around and did some DNA testing and found out that it's much closer to a succulent than it is an agave. So Sotal has a DO, which is a denomination of origin, uh, which is a protection and set of laws that di dictate how the spirit can be made and where it can be made. Sotal can only be made in the three states of Mexico of Chihuahua, Durango, or Coahuila. You are not really allowed to make Sotal in other states, but like I said earlier, you can make it in certain parts of Texas. Uh, the DO doesn't actually apply to cross-country things. And since there are Sotal plants in Texas, they can make Sotal in Texas as well. So to kind of recap, what is Sotal? Sotal is a northern Mexican spirit distilled from the Sotal plant and can only be produced in Mexico in the three states of Durango, Chihuahua, and Coahuila. You can produce it in some parts of Texas, but that is usually using a different variation of the Sotal plant than the ones that they use in Mexico. What I find fascinating about Sotal is that the flavor, and I'll actually get more into this later, but the flavor of Sotal, in my opinion, kind of sits somewhere between a really good earthy tequila and a really delicious, spicy, uh, smoky mezcal. Um, it, uh, especially this bottle of Piscadores Sotal, in my opinion, it, it has that awesome, earthy, grassy flavor from a really great tequila, but it has a more subtle smokiness from like a really good mezcal. So of course, I fell in love with it instantly. So what are some of the differences and similarities between Sotal, tequila, and mezcal? Well, and one of the first similarities is something that I already mentioned before. It's actually distilled and produced in a very similar way to mezcal, and I guess some Sotals are produced similar to a tequila. Some Sotals are, uh, first baked and cooked in an earthen pit similar to a mezcal, which is where I believe some of the smoke comes from. And some of them are actually cooked in a steam above ground oven similar to tequila. One of the big differences though, is that while agave can take up to about 25 years to mature before it can be made into a spirit, Sotal only takes about 12 to 15 years to mature before you're able to uh, harvest it, cook it, and then distill it. What's crazy though is that typically one agave piña or agave heart can yield up to about six liters of tequila, whereas one Sotal heart really only yields one bottle of Sotal. So it's a much more labor intensive process than a tequila or a mezcal is. Another similarity is that Sotal can also be aged just like a tequila. So right here I have a silver Sotal and a Reposado Sotal. They also make Añejo Sotal, I just don't have a bottle. And it follows the same set of rules. It's aged between six months to a year in French oak barrels, giving it that nice golden color that you see here. But all right, now that we've kind of gone over this, what it is, the similarities, where it comes from and all of that, let's dive into what these two spirits taste like. All right, so we are going to pour out a little bit of our silver Sotal on my right here, your left. And then we're gonna do the Reposado Sotal over on your right. So let's uh, smell the silver first and then give it a taste and then we can talk about it. So right on the nose, you get that earthy, smoky uh, smell. It's very, it's not much, different from the way a tequila smells and it's not, but it's not as overpowering as like when you open a bottle of mezcal where you're just like, oh, oh God, 
This is a much more subtle smoke, both on the nose and on the palate. So it's a very complex spirit. It has a lot of those good tequila tones, that mild smokiness uh, that I was mentioning before. It's very mineral and almost citrusy in a way. So it's a very complex spirit that again, the best way I can think to describe it is if a really great tequila and a really great mezcal had a baby and it took the two best aspects of those spirits and came down into one. It's easier to drink than a mezcal. It's a much easier on the palate, but it still has a good amount of smoke to it. Now, let's move on to the Reposado Sotal. So this already smells much more mellow and much more subtle than the Silver Sotal. Wow. So here we have the uh, Hacienda de Chihuahua so, uh, Reposado Sotal. This one really isn't all that smoky, and it's, it's in my opinion, uh, very similar to like a really good Reposado tequila. It has a little bit more of that earth. It still has some of those undertones of the Sotal, that complex minerality. I'm not sure if it's the way that they produce this one or what it is, but it just doesn't have a lot of that smoke that the Piscadores Sotal has. Still excellent spirit, a very delicious uh, Reposado spirit here. But it's funny because you do get some of the smoke and earthiness on the nose, but it's just not as present in the Reposado so tall. I'm assuming that the barrel kind of smoothens out some of that smokiness as well, um, but still a very excellent spirit to sip on its own. I could sip this, but I'm also very partial. I would probably sip this too, and I typically don't sip uh, uh, silver spirits, so it's really, really good. That's enough for me. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.